answer for so the restricted answer for from 2015 past paper this is question one volcanoes produce a variety of molten substances including sulfur and silicon dioxide complete the table to show the strongest type of attraction that is broken when each substance melts we've got sulfur melting at 113 and silicon dioxide going at 1610 okay, this is super high this is you know reasonably low okay so what you've got to recognize is the different type of bonding here so sulfur you should know is s8 this is discrete well discrete molecular covalent so that means that each molecule of sulfur forms a ring of eight sulfurs okay and when they are solid what's actually happening here is we have little sticky bits going on between these rings okay now those little sticky bits are not particularly strong in fact they are as weak as you can get they are just London dispersion forces okay so it doesn't take a lot of energy to break these ones in here and so we can end up with these now moving around freely round about each other okay however silicon dioxide you should also know is a network covalent now what that means is that every single silicon and oxygen is joined together by a covalent bond so the entire thing is kind of all connected up into a neat I can't I'm not even going to draw the network <clears throat> but connected all together so that means if I want to melt this I actually need to break the internal bonds and those internal bonds are covalent and they are strong hence the fact it's so high if you wish to you could say that the silicon to oxygen because they have different electronegativities they're polar covalent but it's in brackets in the mark scheme it's not necessary volcanic sulfur can be used sorry can be put to a variety of uses one such use involves reacting sulfur with phosphorus to make a compound with the formula p4s3 draw a possible structure for p4s3 right i ended up scribbling quite a lot of stuff and things that weren't necessarily going to fit nicely um, but where you have to start is you have phosphorus and sulfur sulfur has a valency of two that means it needs to be connecting at two points Phosphorus, group 5, so its valency, what oh, valency, dodgy spelling, sorry, is 3. Okay, so it needs to connect at 3 points. So I started off by saying, right, okay, let's put sulfur in the middle um, and connect all three of those to a phosphorus. Okay, because then the phosphorus gets 3 and the sulfur gets, gets 1 on that side. And then I can connect up to another phosphorus on the other side. And then that phosphorus has got three and that sulfur has got two, but then I've only got two phosphorus, so that doesn't work. So what I then tried to do was to use more phosphorus. So what I did was I made a little triangle of phosphoruses. So I've got three there. And then what I needed to do was connect this phosphorus to these three going through a sulfur. And that's pretty much it that one worked okay um, there is definitely a neater diagram on the um, on the mark scheme but what they're absolutely requiring is that you recognize that's the valencies that you need to use okay uh, part two explain why the covalent radius of sulfur is smaller than that of phosphorus okay so you could write quite a lot for this um, what you need to recognize again is that sulfur is 286 okay in terms of its electron arrangements and it has 16 protons so what we have here is a positive pull from the center of 16 and two full shells and they are shielding and then an outer shell okay phosphorus is 28 so again these two full shells shielding the positive charge and then five in the outer ring but its protons is only 15 so what you've got is a stronger pull here relative to the number of shells that we have shielding and this one's a slightly weaker pull so that's why sulfur manages to yank this section of uh, shells in closer okay and that's what you're trying to see so it's the same number of shell shielding but sulfur has more positive pull in the center so pulls the outer electrons in closer right melting point of sulfur is much higher than that of phosphorus 
explain fully in terms of the structures of sulfur and phosphorus molecules and intermolecular forces um, why the melting point of sulfur is much higher than that of phosphorus. Okay, so we're going through again what you should know about these things. So we should know that sulfur is S8 and that phosphorus is P4. Okay, so it's looking for the structures. So here we have the structures. They are both discrete molecular covalents. Oh, discrete molecular. Okay, what we can also say is that if you want to, because this is about the melting point, okay, if you want to melt these, then what you have to melt apart is the London dispersion forces between molecules. Oh, X3. Okay, right, so we then look at this and we see why is this one so much higher than the phosphorus? What we have here is S8, okay? That means if I look for electrons, I've got eight times the number of electrons in a sulfur. So I have 128 electrons involved in establishing the associations for LDFs, okay? In phosphorus, however, I only have 60. Now, if you put all of that together, you've got your three marks. Okay, you have, so you need to explain that the size of the actual structure of sulfur is much larger, eight rather than four, which means that it has a much larger number of electrons. Okay, which means that you have a much larger number of associations, which are your LDFs. And that's it.